Hello again, it's Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour, and uh, I guess we all made it through Christmas all right, even though this may be downloaded later. Now we're looking forward to uh, New Year's. This is the 30th of December, Friday, so we only have one more day left in 2005. Then we go into a whole new year. It really seems hard to believe that it's been a whole year has gone by already. But they do say time is speeding up and everything is getting faster. And I believe it because this whole year has been a big one for me with all the traveling. And I'm already booking through most of 2006, so uh, it's probably going to go fast also. But let me give out the telephone numbers before we begin. Anyone who wants to call in, the number in the United States is 1-888-268-4313. 1-888-268-4313. And the international number, for those who are listening overseas, although I always think it's in the middle of the night over there, but you never know. But the ones overseas, if they want to call in on other countries, it's 1-281-419-7697. Okay. One thing I wanted to say before I forgot about it, you know, a few weeks ago, I told you I had come back from Dubai in the Middle East, where I was over there for 10 days, and I got back here right before Thanksgiving, and I was talking about how the sheikh over there was putting billions and billions of dollars into building this wonderful new city of skyscrapers that's just sprouting out of the desert. Well, now I have found that, I guess, one of the neighboring countries I don't know if they're jealous or if they think there's competition or what there is, but the sheik in Saudi Arabia is now going to do the same thing. And it was on the Internet. He's supposed to be putting 40 to $50 billion of his own oil money into building a huge city on the coast by the water in Saudi Arabia. Well, I found it on the Internet. It has a picture of the proposed city. It's also going to have skyscrapers. It's going to have all of the luxuries and the things that are occurring now in Dubai. And it says there would be 500,000 new jobs generated. Now, whether that's in the construction or if that is afterwards or not, but it sounds like they're all going modern over there. And they are building totally new, wonderful cities that are going to surpass anything. And I also had news on the Internet that the Dubai, where I was at, is one of the buildings they are building is going to be the tallest building in the world. So I think this is the place to watch. The Middle East is not what we think it is. I guess we always think of them as living in tents in the middle of the desert, and, uh, you know, hoarding the gold money, the uh, oil money, and living in these palaces. But actually, there's a lot more going on over there than you think. And all the companies in the world, the major corporations, are going to relocate into these big cities. They are building corporate headquarters in many of these huge cities. So that's going to be interesting. I don't know how many of you know that the tallest building really in the world, I think there's an argument about it, is in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And I saw that when I was over in Bali. We had to go through Kuala Lumpur. It's twin uh, buildings. I guess you would call them twin towers because they are like pointed on the top. But there's two of them side by side, and they are joined with connecting bridges are connecting walkways, I guess you would say, on several of the floors crossing over from one building to the other. And they say the two of them are supposed to be the tallest buildings. But um, I don't know if there's an argument with that over the Sears Tower, or which one really is. 
But they said in the one in Kuala Lumpur, you can live your entire life in those buildings and never even have to go outside on the street. Everything they need is right there, schools, hospitals, uh, stores, everything. So things are amazing things are happening in that part of the world. We always focus on the war, but there is a lot of very constructive things going on, too. So I think this will be interesting to watch what's going to happen in Saudi Arabia, because that is where a lot of the oil money is. And we all know where that oil money is coming from. It's coming from a lot of our own pockets, the profits that they're making on that. But at least it's good to know that they're taking the profits and using it in a constructive way. They are not hoarding it. They are building huge metropolises and huge cities. Because, I said before, you can even go skiing over there in the middle of the desert. They have these places in Dubai that was the... Uh, snow dome and inside of that you can even live in there they have quarters where you can live in there if you wanted to live among snow-capped mountains and skiing and some people said why would I want to go to the desert and then go skiing but it's like they've let their imagination run wild and anything is possible over there so I'm going to be watching that part of the world because they do want me to come back And uh, now that my books have been introduced over there, they said they expect them to take off all throughout the Middle East. And even though they had a censor board, that had to okay the books before they were brought in. But now I'm in the middle of planning my next trip to uh, Europe and to Asia. I'll be returning over there the end of February and be gone the whole month of March. I have to speak at the International Hypnosis Conference in New Delhi, India. And on that trip, I'm going to get to see the Taj Mahal. So I do take time off to have a little fun, too, to have a little vacation and play, too. I don't like to just have all work. That's that's going to be a new first one for me is to go to India. Then I'll be back to Russia and to Holland. So we're trying to put those trips all together now. So I'll have many interesting things to tell you about the trips and about the talks and the classes that I'm giving everywhere. But uh, right now, I guess we're all looking forward for New Year's. And this is the time of the year that I'm home for a while because I live in the mountains. And when it snows here in Arkansas, we can have some pretty bad winters. And when it snows, I can't get to the airport. They may clean off the highways, but they don't clean off these back roads that go up into the mountains. So sometimes it's difficult to get into down the highway to get over to Fayetteville where I can get the airport to uh, get the planes. So years ago, I stopped booking anything this time of the year rather than take the chance. So wouldn't you know, we've been in the 60s now here for the last two weeks. I think it's like that a lot of parts of the United States. There isn't any winter right now. They say, what's happening? We've gone right into spring and summer. Well, everything is changing with the weather and all of it. But anyway, that's why I'm home right now, and I can do the shows live. When I get ready to go overseas again, then I'll start taping the shows again, and they'll be uh, uh, broadcast taped but they can still all be downloaded at, out of the archive. I've been trying to debate on what to talk about tonight because I had two different times that I went part way through a subject and didn't get to finish it. Because on the talks that I'm giving, when I'm doing lectures, I will speak for over two to three hours on just one subject. So it's been hard to try to condense it down into one hour. So I had two that I would started, but I think what I'm going to do tonight is complete the one I started last week. Because of Christmas, I began talking about the Jesus material. This is a material that is found in my two books that I wrote about Jesus. Uh, one is Jesus and the Essenes, and they walked with Jesus. And as you know, this information comes through my hypnosis work, when I, which I've been doing for 40 years, and it comes from the different clients when they go back through time and are actually in these time periods. 
And with the way I work, the person becomes the other personality totally, and these things are happening to them at that time. This life ceases to exist. They are the other person in that time period. So the information you can give is, is get from these people is really startling. It's like nothing that has been reported. One of the books that I'm thinking about writing in the future deals with history as it really was because of all the cases I've had of the different time periods. I found out that we don't know really what history was like. We just know what's come down to us, but we don't really know what was happening in these different time periods. So that's my job as a reporter to get this information back. And that's what I consider myself, the reporter, the researcher, and the investigator of lost knowledge. So I don't channel. I accumulate the information that comes through thousands and thousands of people. And this is what I write my books about. By putting it together, you get a little piece of information here, a little piece of information there, and you put it together like a gigantic puzzle. But the Jesus material was some of the very first uh, cases that I had, and it was back in the 1980s. And uh, I'm going to try to remember where I stopped last week, but um, the Jesus and the Essenes material came from a young woman who was an American and who had never even been out of the United States. She didn't even graduate from high school. She dropped out. She said they wanted her freedom, and you know, naturally, kids, when they get out, they find out it isn't free out there. So she ended up going into the Army so she could have an occupation, and she learned computers. This was in the 80s when it was just starting out. That was the extent of her education. But yet, when I worked with her, she went through 30 different lifetimes, covering all phases of history. So a lot of the other lives that I got from her are going to be reported in some of my other books. One of the other books that I wrote about this fascinating young woman was The A Soul Remembers Hiroshima. And in that past life, she relived the life of a Japanese man who was living outside of Hiroshima and was in the city of Hiroshima whenever the bomb was dropped. So here again, I was able to get lost information because there was not much information or any books written by what the people went through at that time. And that's what my job is to get back lost information, information that's either been forgotten or never known in the first place, or we've had bits and pieces and a lot of it's been changed as supplies to the Jesus material. And what is told in the Bible is not even half of the story. There's a whole lot more to the story that has never come down to us. And some of the parts of the story, I believe, are so beautiful and so full of miracles and wonder that they should be in the Bible. But a lot of it has not come down to us. A lot of it was removed or never inserted in the Bible in the first place. And remember, when I'm doing this Jesus material, I am very respectful of people's belief systems. And I'm not trying to go against anyone's belief system, but this is just adding material to what they already believe, realizing that you don't have all of the story. The young girl was the one who went back. She was only in her 20s. And when she went back through 30 different lifetimes, one of them being the one in Hiroshima, which was her last life before coming into this one, and we took her back through time, jumping back like a 100 years at a time. And that's why we ended up with so many lifetimes. I just didn't know what 